Good afternoon, everyone. This talk is about Colabora Online and its integration into OnCloud. And I will focus on what happened in the past year. Um, first, uh, there is some background noise. That, uh, uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, so you might wonder who makes Colabora Online. Uh, Colabora Online is made by Colabora Productivity. Um, we are using the LibreOffice technology uh, to take it to the enterprises, to education, to other large um, organizations handled by administrators. We are putting LibreOffice technology to the cloud at Collabora Online. And um, we are part of uh, Collabora, um, who is a global consultancy. And in general, we try to do good things around open source. And at the end, the hope is that um, everyone benefits from the good work we are doing. Um, regarding Colabor Online, um, I would like to present you what's new around uh, what happened in the past year around the usability of the software, like how the user interface has changed. Um, also, what file support or interoperability improvements we made. Um, we did uh, lots of work on performance to uh, make it more performant with, with edge cases and um, lots of collaborative editors uh, in parallel. And so on. Um, I would like to also give you a flavor of uh, some selection of new fixes and features we did, especially in Writer, in Calc, in Impress. Um, we will get to draw as well. At the end. I would like to present you what uh, news we have if you use Colabora Online from mobile devices. Uh, then we will get to the integration, like how we talk to OnCloud, how OnCloud talks to us, what's, uh, what's new in that integration piece. And uh, we will also have a look at a few new things which were done especially for our cloud. Um, so uh, the first thing that you might notice compared to like a year ago is that um, we have um, uh, we replaced the menu-based user interface with the notebook bar. And even in the notebook bar, there are lots of small details, uh, small new things you can uh, you can choose uh, in terms of um, uh, functionality that's available on the user interface. Um, so it does not mean that the menu base system is completely going away, and the notebook bar is uh, providing you a, a selection of um, of the old features. Like um, basically everything is there, still there, but. Um, um, you need to navigate through all the notebook bar tabs, and and then you can find like um, in Calc you can now do auto filtering with all the those detailed uh, settings and what data exactly you would like to see. Uh, you can also uh, define uh, custom numberings and valid lists, and you can have this simplified uh, find dialog like this find bar at the bottom, but also you can have the much more detailed. Um, find and replace dialog as well, and so on. So, in case you install on cloud and Collabora Online as a new installation today, then you get the notebook bar, and uh, that replaces the previous menu based user interface. Um, you can also collapse it to just a menu. Um, this helps in case you are uh, only viewing a document and you don't want to do any formatting. Um, uh, changes so you are just consuming your document and you are not interacting with it with, with an, on an editing basis. Um, also, you can switch back to the classic mode, uh, the menu based system, and also in case you are upgrading from some uh, previous Colabora Online version, then still uh, this, uh, the default is kept. And then you can decide um, as, an, as an administrator, you can decide what's the uh, right time for you, your users uh, to switch to them notebook bar based interface. Some really um, were waiting for this newer interface. Some uh, need um, a bit of time so that they can get used to it. And nobody really knows other than the administrator, like when is the right time to learn this newer interface. So that's why um, on upgrade, you don't get a new one. And you get to decide when you would like to start using the notebook bar. Uh, I would like to give you um, an overview of, of what file support and, and interoperability improvements within. So uh, one thing is that um, in, for writer documents, uh, Collabora Online can now export files to EPUB, which is um, probably familiar to you. In case not, it's, it's really similar to PDF, but um, it's more um, optimized for uh, electronic uh, uh, 
like ebook readers. And, and um, it's a format which uh, presents reflowable attacks. So whatever screen size you have, it can nicely reflow in contrast to PDF, which is optimized for other workloads. So um, viewing it in a small screen is typically problematic. But it's a similar um, um, for reading a format. And um, no uh, online can um, produce that format directly. You don't have to export to some format, download that one format, and then use some external to, to uh, do this conversion for you. Um, during the past year, ODF 1.3 was announced, uh, which is an upgrade from the previous 1.2. Uh, which is uh, quite a big change. Uh, 1.2 was uh, out for about 10 years now. And uh, much of the changes um, that uh, available in the news pack was already written as an extension by LibreOffice and based on that Collabora Online. But uh, still, um, now we write this newer version of ODF uh, by default. In case uh, you are uh, interested in Calc, then and now you can download um, uh, Calc sheets as CSV directly. Again, no need to uh, export it using ODS or XLSX and then convert it further using some Mars external tool. Um, if um, you prefer um, DOCX, XLSX, PPTX formats over ODF, then uh, we spent quite some time on, um, on this continuous effort that uh, we have um, better and better uh, interoperability with these formats. One specific improvement there was that the handling of headers and footers in presentations. Um, these are kind of special because they are kind of part of the master page, but at the same time, they are kind of shapes. So it's, it's tricky how the, the various pieces interact there together. And the end result was that previously um, importing these headers and, and footer shapes from PPTX into Collabora Online was resulting in some poor um, effect. And uh, now we have much better support for this. We are also writing these back nicely. Um, also, uh, smarter support is, is again a longer story. We have now, um, again, a, a few sets of smart art layouts which are working uh, correctly and and then this is growing the list of smart art layouts which are um, um, imported and then rendered and exported uh, perfectly um, we also added support for uh, multiple columns in uh, shape text so in case um, you have a um, presentation with some some shape and you have lots of content there then previously you could choose if you would like some table shape, which can have multiple columns, and that means also multiple columns, and then kind of manually lay the text out so that you can decide like what goes to the first column and what goes to the next one and so on. Or you could have some nice shape, but then you just have the, the container for the text there. And rather know we have layout support for this. So you just uh, said that you would like to have two columns and then you start typing and it will nicely and automatically reflow to the next, uh, to the next uh, column. And needless to say, this also helps uh, in case you open PPTX files and collaborate on them in Collabora Online, um, uh, which have this feature because then now uh, you will interact with this uh, multi column shape text properly. As an aside, we also have uh, this um, new writing direction, this bottom to two, top, left to right. So in case you have some content and you would like to either rotate it to the right as, or rotate it to the left, like perhaps this is kind of uh, some, some row header, then you can now do this nicely. Um, another small uh, new feature is that whenever you um, add some some um, graphic shape to your presentation, then now you can crop it in a way that you define some um, some shape ge geometry saying that this is uh, this uh, mask is uh, defines uh, what part of the shape should be visible. So this was some um, PPTX file just with the image as is previously, and now we nicely and correctly render that uh, cropping of the shape so that it looks um, matching uh, the reference rendering. Now, features is one thing, but uh, if you use Collabora Online with lots of users, then performance also matters a lot. Uh, one metric you can use is, here is my, my server. 
uh, it's very powerful and I have lots of users there. How much memory will Collabor Online use on that server uh, when users are collaborating on document? And um, we, we wrote a benchmark tool for this, a tile bunch, which is rendering lots of tiles like this little uh, pieces of, of document. Um, this, uh, this, these tiles are basically building um, what looks like a document. And this benchmark tool will try to render lots of tiles and we measure the CPU consumption and the memory consumption. And for that specific workload, once we started to measure it and focus on what are the hotspots, then you can see that before and after there is uh, quite some difference. So we uh, put uh, quite some effort into consuming less memory, which means that the same server can now um, serve more concurrent users on the unchanged um, server. Um, now I would like to give you a selection of uh, new writer fixes and features. Um, one um, little feature we added was adding support, better support for filling in dockets forms. Uh, there you can have drop down lists or checkboxes or um, entries, uh, entry fields where you need to type in something. And um, the checkboxes and the entry fields were um, working already to some extent quite, quite, um, um, quite fine. So there were no pain points there. But the drop down list is somewhat special because it needs um, some some explicit uh, client side support so that you can really see that as a drop down and you can select something and then you can move on to the next question so this, now this is uh, working uh, quite um, close to what you would expect uh, we added support for uh, writer um, gutter margins this is a new functionality in the writer page styles um, this is interesting because we um, we were uh, hearing this feedback from government customers that some government templates really like to use this. It's some additional vertical space um, on the left side or the right side of the pages. Uh, for us um, uh, Europeans, this is typically on the left side. And um, in case um, you, know, you will later print this document and the binding will be consuming some space on the left of the pages, then you can see and decide exactly uh, how much space you would like to have on the right and on the left and then take it into account that the, the binding will additionally consume some space which is the gutter margin and we also updated the user interface for this so in case you are editing the right of page style then you can, you can you have this preview widget which shows you like um, how how the um, the body text will be laid out on the page and this takes, and this also takes um, get a margin into account. Um, then we exposed uh, the context menu so that uh, you can uh, change the anchor type of uh, shapes in in um, Python, so that um, in case you prefer inline images or anchor to correct term, or you are interested in ODF files which also support this two paragraph anchoring, then you can now decide this. You can also drag and drop the actual anchor point and then you can see how the text reflows and decide if that matches your expectation or you would like to, uh, you would prefer some, some other layout for your document. Um, then in terms of Calc, the biggest rework was that we added support for freezing panes, which is very popular if you have large enough finance spreadsheets. This required a quite large rework to the client side, to the JavaScript piece of Collabora Online, uh, because now we no longer use what's technically more close to a map with lots of small images, this image ties, and then putting these together, stitching them, and it looks like a document. But we rather have some one HTML canvas, and then we render everything there. And you can have some, some um, freeze rows at the top or some freeze columns at the left, and then you can navigate with the rest of the screen, and they will, they will be still around. Um, if you ever used um, something similar in, in desktop Excel or desktop uh, Collabor Office, then you know this feature it was missing in from online. Also, in case you have lots of sheets and you dive into managing into them, then now you have much more options. Um, other than this uh, previously available pre canned options like do this or do that, now you can also have a more complex um, option where a dialogue comes up and you can decide exactly if you would like to move or copy 
or value value insurance should exactly happen and what should be the new name of the sheet and so on um, also if you interact with pivot tables then the whole complex pivot table user interface is now exposed in Collabora online uh, so you can uh, nicely sele select exactly what should be the source of the pivot table. You can also customize its layout, exactly what should be, uh, what uh, fields should be the row fields, what should be the column fields. Um, you can select if um, what data fields you would like to have to set if you would like to have the sum of those, uh, how you should do ordering, uh, what should be the destination, and so on. All those um, detailed options are now available in, in the online user interface. Uh, if you would like to uh, work with name ranges, then no, the notebook bar gives you buttons to define name ranges and to manage them. Um, again, for the defining the name, uh, a dialog comes up and you can exactly um, select what should be the source of that, what should be the name, and um, you can set a custom scope on that. Um, in case um, you would like to manage ex existing um, uh, named ranges, then um, you have a dedicated dialog for that. You can set their name, uh, their um, formula range or expression. You can also uh, update their existing scope to match your needs. Uh, this also applies for printed ranges as well. Then um, the other popular feature in, in, in spreadsheets uh, from in the browser is charts. So charts now have some improved uh, sidebar for chart editing. You can set a custom title or you can just switch that off completely. Or in case you have more content for the title, then perhaps you want to split part of that into a subtitle. Uh, you can also customize if you would like to show or don't show a legend and so on. Um, this is uh, quite nice because the smart art translates one-to-one uh, -to, -one to the mobile wizard that's available on the mobile interface, which is something that you can use with a single hand bonnet. Um, also, we exposed um, quite some statistical tools for data analysis. So in case uh, you would like to um, use uh, sampling or correlation or covariance or any of these other usual um, statistics and functions, then now this is available. Just go to the, uh, just open um, a calc in Collabora Online, then you go to the data uh, sheet and, or the data tab of the notebook bar, and um, you can open the statistics and, and decide what you would like to there, uh, see there exactly. When it comes to imports, um, instead of just inserting some pre-count table shape, now we have a dedicated dialog to describe and to give a name to the table, uh, decide exactly how many columns and rows uh, it should have, decide if you would like to have a table heading and, um, and all the other uh, options of the table. Um, we added support for table shadows. Uh, this is again improving PPTX support as well because PPTX has table shadows and um, this means you can uh, decide if um, the table should have a shadow and what should be the shadow position and what should be the shadow color and perhaps you would like to have a bit of blue around that and what should be the radius of that. So full support for table shadows similar to other shapes is now available. Um, you can um, customize a header and footer of a master page or a slide in, a, in online when it comes to presentations. Uh, also, um, one uh, larger change in, in Impress uh, was uh, that you can um, view presentation while, while uh, scrolling through a single large pane. And um, this will also work with PDF files. We will see that in a moment. Uh, Next to the existing writer and um, Calc and Impress modules in Collabora Online, a um, new module compared to last year is the Draw module, uh, which is very handy in case you would like to create some flowcharts or technical drawings or some posters or brochures or something that, that um, where um, some vector graphical drawing is, uh, is, is a good fit. You could misuse Impress for this, but that's really for slides, not for, for printed, um, um, printed um, documents. Uh, 
Uh, this also means that uh, in row um, we added uh, native uh, client-side support um, for uh, setting the various properties of shapes and and interacting with the glue points and the connectors. And now th these are working exactly as you would expect. So you can have a line shape and then it connects one shape to the other and then it will stick to that glue point and so on. Um, in Writer, Calc, and Impress, um, in, in all of these modules, uh, font forks are now available. So in case you prefer this wavy or complex 3D tags, then you can now add them. Um, PDF um, rendering, much improved PDF rendering and searching and annotation. This is something that was added explicitly for on-cloud needs. Uh, so now you can open PDF files in Collabora Online. They will basically open and draw. And um, you can just scroll through the, um, through the various uh, pages and similar, like this is much more or less matching what you probably got used to in other PDF viewers. But then um, you can not only view this, but also you can collaborate on this, you can add commands and you can add various annotations. Also, uh, this uh, nicely works with collaborative editing. Um, and on top of that, all the existing Collabora Online features work on top of that for viewing. So in case you like to use the secure view in OnCloud, where we try to mostly span, send just pixels to the browser and perhaps even watermark the ties so that uh, people can't just copy out and leak some content of your document, then this uh, PDF viewing and, and, um, and annotation is working nicely with secure view. So these are nicely integrated. Um, another uh, topic somewhat connected to security is um, the support for VBA and, uh, and macros in general. Um, so Python scripting or VBA macros. Um, depending on how you talk to, uh, some really want to avoid this at all in the browser because um, they learned several years ago that this is a security nightmare and best to avoid that. But some actually have macros in their documents and they want to take it to the browser and use Collabora Online to continue editing those documents and collaborating on that and so on. Uh, so our approach is that this is disabled by default, but then administrators can enable and they can even set a custom security level. So you can decide if this is completely disabled or is it's enabled, but you get a warning and you need to acknowledge that there are scary warnings in your in macros in your document and only then you can interact with these macros or you can just uh, uh, use macros and you don't care about the security implication of macros. This also means that once they are enabled then you can run various macros and um, in general um, what, uh, what uh, works uh, with, with, uh, with the Star Basic interpreter in Collabora Online for VBA purposes, or in case you prefer that, there is also Python macros. That's something you can invoke. Um, now, uh, regarding what's new on the server side, which is like less visible, uh, we now have a Collabora Online style guide. So in case you prefer that your organization has some teaming and you try to uh, rebrand or re recolor um, all of the, the web apps that you are using from the browser to match the, the teaming guide of your organization, then you can have uh, different colors. You can see that this is exactly the same, uh, same document, just with different teaming, and then it's matching um, or, or getting closer to your, the colors of your organization, and then you more feel like being at home. Um, then I would like to uh, talk about um, Collabora Online for Android and iOS, uh, which, which is an interesting app. Um, it's a mobile app, so it's something that you can get from the stores. Uh, you can actually get it for free because it's, it's compiling, uh, like it's, it's, um, it's completing the, the Collabora Online experience that you already have from the browser, but it also allows uh, offline editing. So depending on what's your workflow, you might want to actually use this Collabora Office app uh, for online and, and iOS. And then you can um, comment or review documents on the go, and, and you can 
um, make your comments and save it and later you will email it back to somebody but at the same time in case you have continuous connectivity then you might um, say that i don't care about color office for mobile devices i will just use color online from the browser from the mobile browser and then i i can do live collaborative editing with everyone um, so we are turning sidebar panels to this uh, mobile wizard and in that case uh, you can uh, set various um, details um, of the document uh, complex formatting using this um, this um, mobile wizard and that's something that has few enough widgets that you can actually interact with that even on the smaller uh, mobile screens so you can see like what the work count for this dialogue uh, for, for this document in case you are writing an abstract and you know your requirements, how many words at min or at max it should have and so on. Um, we also added initial uh, dark mode support on under, on Android, which is um, something that users expect when newer Android has some system level support for dark mode. And also we have um, um, we exposed the pivot table user interface on tablets and um, in general we have lots of performance improvements which are primarily benefiting um, mobile devices. Uh, Chromebook is, um, is getting the laptop user interface even if technically it's, it's more like an Android app and uh, we made sure that uh, it, it, um, it appears uh, the way that, uh, that's, that's uh, the best and the best um, usable for the users. So we have uh, special tweaks for Chromebook, even, even if you install it uh, as Colabar Office from the Play Store or if you just open it from the browser. Um, and this is how it looks like. It's it's um, it's really the 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 user interface that that would be normally visible to uh, to laptops. So I think that uh, mostly concludes my talk. I really regret that we are not meeting each other in person this year. Uh, this is a um, selection of developers who who work on Collabora Online, and we really look forward to next year uh, meet everyone in person. And I think that uh, concludes my talk. Thanks for listening and for your support. Um, we will have a question and, and answers um, section after the talk. I will go down. And apart from that, in case you would have further questions, then we have, you can contact us on Python. You can go to our website and fill in the contact form, or you can ju just drop an email, uh, hello at collaboraoffice.com. And then we will try to get back to you as soon as possible and try to answer your questions. I think that's it. Thanks for listening. And then I will head over to the questions and ask answers, I guess.